So we're going to do a figure today. Uh, this is a character that I, when we were in New York a few years ago, I photographed him in Central Park. I saw him kind of zoomed in and he was just kind of standing there playing a flute. I love painting musicians, which you guys probably all know. And um, we're kind of an 18 by 24, 18, 24. Uh, canvas, which I toned actually a little darker, a little bit more colorful than I uh, often do. So if you look at, here's my flesh tone. So it's very similar to my, it's kind of a more mauve, uh, reddish mauve color than my flesh tone, but basically it's, uh, it's still in the middle values. So I'm gonna start a little different today, just, um, just to show you that I'm not, a, I'm not a, truly I'm not a habit of creature. I try all kinds of different ways of doing things. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna um, get the sketch down and we're gonna put him butt hair because we have to have room for the flute. So his head's gonna probably be about up here. Oh, and I'm just gonna start scribbling and then we're gonna, I'm gonna take it from there and I'll show you what I mean by scribbling. So head is gonna be kind of in here. Um, And a collar here. Now, if I end up cropping them here, that's fine with me because we have a lot. And then I'll talk a little bit about my thought process as to how I'm gonna go attack this thing. Now the flute is gonna come, the flute, piccolo, excuse me. Piccolo is about that angle, a little off. It's about that angle. And front of his body is about here. Back of his shirt is somewhere in here. His back is, and I just put these marks down kind of willy nilly. Well, that's a phrase you don't hear, huh? Uh, you don't hear that often enough, let's put it that way. I like willy-nilly. Uh, so we're gonna go there. Then we wanna find some proportional stuff going on here, okay? So his arm, uh, the back of his arm lines up here. So it's about here, uh, it looks about right. And the angle is like that, like that, pretty close. All right, and then we're gonna kind of come up with forearm because the elbow lines up kind of with the front of his face. Now, I don't even know if that front of his face is accurate right now. So that's why I'm saying this is, this is a real, I call this ghost drawing. Um, and I heard that phrase by uh, uh, a portrait artist once. And I like that whole thing because it's there, but it's not there. So then we're gonna come in with the front of his body. His other arm is gonna be about in here, hands somewhere in this range. And then we're gonna do a better drawing, okay? I could do, I could approach this one of two ways. I could either do a better drawing or I could start literally painting shapes. But just for, and generally I, I very often start painting shapes, but I'm gonna do a little more precise drawing using that as kind of my ghost. So what we're gonna do is I took a little liner, bought a brand new liner yesterday. Look at that, brand new cheap old liner. Um, and we're gonna come in, we're gonna come down the front and find the eye. And then the nose, we wanna find that nice angle of the nose right about in here. And it's about that long. And the top of his head looks to be about here. So this is a little bolder, just a little more pigment in the, on the brush. And Now, I, when I draw, I do the same thing that I do when I paint. By that, I mean, I literally proceed like I know what I'm doing, but I also understand that I could be off. So we're gonna come up with this chin about here. And there's almost a silhouette. That looks pretty good. His head looks like it might be a little wider, which is gonna bring his back, the back of the collar which if I line, line the back of the collar up, lines up about here, and it's gonna bring it about here. So we're gonna just do some kind of real quick line work in here. And a little bit up in here, it has a little bit more top to his head, I think, than I have. Uh, his brow line is about here. Paint was just a little too dry because I don't want to, this is a, a liner. So you don't really, you're not putting a lot of pressure down. And down, nostril about here, wing of the nostril about here. 
probably the lower eye is, sits right about, probably a little low on the eye, either that or a little short on the nose, which is okay because I'm a little long on the lip. <laughs> so you do one of things. Uh, that's pretty good, actually. Okay. And let's get a little bit of this in, even though I've got to probably change it quite a bit. A little. And well, now we're gonna be a little bit more careful. I wanna look at this space and it's, it's smaller than I've indicated here. And I'll show you what that means. Literally, we wanna get the back of his head in, the collar, the shirt, the angle of that collar coming down. Now, if I were just painting and not drawing, I would be, doing the same kind of double checking and I'd just be painting the shapes. But sometimes I like doing the drawing. Occasionally I will just draw, I, I call it shoot from the hip. And it's basically, we just draw and it's, you know approach it as a um, completed drawing without doing a ghost. And his ear, let's, let's figure out what his ear is. His ear sits back more than halfway. So his ear sits probably about in here. Top of it is about here. Somewhere bottom of it is right below, right about here. And then there's a jawline up in there. Okay. And we don't want those eyes starry eyed either because we want them kind of. So, front of his arm about here. Now we're going to close this space up, as I mentioned. The, the hand appears to be more like in here, which is going to make the forearm more like this. Now I'm going to look at that space. It's a negative space. I'm pretty close, pretty darn close. If I'm not right on. So Laurel has a question. Do you delineate the shadow shapes with lines? No, masks? nope. So I'll show you what I do if I'm, and there is no heavy shadow. Yeah, there's a little bit of it, but I, I would take a brush. Now I wouldn't delineate it with line. I would delineate it like this. So If you're going to, not that you always have to, but if you're going to, I'd eliminate it with kind of a scribble tone. I don't like lines on my interior um, part of the image. I don't want lines. So that's basically how I would kind of deal with, with the uh, indication. Otherwise, you, you'll tend to play, paint up to that line, but if you don't have it, a, a cleanly definitive line, gen your chances of painting just right up to an edge, because I will paint it in that way too. I'll paint it in, I won't paint in the hard edge. Uh, let me finish off this hand real quick because I want to get into the painting part. Little finger, it's foreshortened, so it looks real short. There's a front side of the palm, the wrist, and the that arm. This is probably going to be a little bit up a little bit higher, which is going to make the cuff about there. Now we're going to look at that space. There's this difference. There's another space there. And that space is an, another negative space. We want that to be pretty accurate. And then the thumb, this thumb comes in front of the piccolo. I assume that's a piccolo, you guys. I told Scott it was, and so um, not being a musical expert, I, I can't say, but a small flute, I think, is there may be another word for it. And I'm sure someone will correct me if they know what the hell that word might be. Finger. Another finger going down. And a little part of finger, and then a little finger pickle sticking up right there. It's probably too long, but I'll know when I paint the shapes. You want that line to be go right straight through the hand. All right. And then we get all kinds of little gobbledygook here at the end. Wow, I planned that pretty well. That shocks me. I swear to God, half the time when I do this, 
I end up with a thing going off the page and I have to do all kinds of, so I feel um, I did something right. That's a nice thing to do when you paint, huh? Do something right. This part of the thumb comes all the way down here. This part of the hand's a little down about here. Then we get into the arm, arm. This I will probably adjust as we continue because this point right here, go straight up, it's about right here. So. Are you drawing mostly with straight lines? Uh, not as much as I usually do. Bring that collar back a little further. Okay, that's good enough. I've got enough info that's pretty accurate. Now I'm going to stand back. How does it feel? Feels okay. I don't like where the ear is sitting. It's ear has to come forward a little bit, probably more right about here than up. Top of the ear is going to be parallel right about here. Then we're going to come down. So the ear is going to sit a little bit more forward than I had it. Um, but right now, let's pick up one of my big old sloppy brushes that I usually start with. And we're going to kind of get that background in, and that'll give me a better feeling of the silhouette. Now, I'm not even going to worry too much about how accurate that background is. I'm just going to kind of put block it in. And it's green, so I'm using sap green and ochre. I don't want to. I don't want a screaming green. That's screaming enough for me, as far as I'm concerned. Right there. Um, I think I'll go a little darker. Bring a little bit more green and maybe a touch of burnt umber palette today. Uh, I have actually some yellow. I'm not going to use it. I um, let's see. What do I have? I have titanium buff. I have yellow uh, Naples yellow, yellow ochre. A lizard, no, um, not a lizard. What is that? Uh, pop, pop, pop. Bird sienna. Thinking and painting always doesn't work. You know, I mean, talking and thing. Um, so a little bit of bird sienna. I don't like that. Just play with it. Mom said it might be a recorder. Yeah, what? It might be a recorder. A recorder. That's right. I don't really know what I know of them. I just don't know exactly what a recorder is compared to say, I think a piccolo is a little bit more formal if I'm not mistaken, and a recorder is not, but don't, don't quote me on that, okay? I'm, I'm constantly just going back to this kind of greenish color that I mixed up and mixing a little brown and blue into it at, from time to time. Now, if it's gonna show off against a shadow or darker part of the, of the uh, character, then I'm gonna probably lighten that color up a little bit, which I might do in here. But I have a couple things to think about when I do that negative space. I've got the light shirt, I've got the dark chin, and I've got the light forearm. So you have to think about being comfortable enough with that specific face color that it'll work against all of those. Take more, I don't wanna spend much time on this. The background is really not what we're painting today. So I literally am gonna do this pretty quick. And if you don't hear me make lots of comments about it, it's because I'm just kind of mixing up all those different colors, trying to emulate a little bit of what I see in front of me. I like these little flickers of this warm color coming through, by the way. Um, accidental, happy accident. Never said that. No, I, it's always neat when that happens. And a whole side on the other side. By not using yellow, meaning cad yellow or any spectrum yellow, any of those yellows, by not using a yellow, I am not allowing this to get terribly intense, which is going to allow me to put more of my focus on the figure, which is really where I want it. I kind of like some of that background. When you do paint real quick like this, a lot of times you get these little background, I call them holidays. I think that's what they call them in, when you paint, paint a house or something. 
Um, and it's just kind of nice because it allows you to do something that you probably wouldn't just pick up and do on your own. A little darker back here, up here. Yeah, right there. Let's just get some dirt going on in here. What do you say? Using a lot of ochre. I'm going to use a little more turp this time because I want it to go on faster. That's the only reason you use a turp. It thins it down. It allows you to make longer strokes like that. So otherwise, turp's not good to use. And I usually usually only use it in the beginning phases of, a, of a, any particular picture. A little darker, maybe a little bit warmer, so a little bit of umber thrown into. Oh, I didn't finish my palette, did I? Don't you hate it when I do that? Uh, Hang on, what do you have the greens reflected in the skin tones? Maybe a little bit, but there's not a lot of green in the skin tone. That's why I'm not using a real strong green here. So I, I will probably use more. Let me explain something. When you get reflected color, not reflected light, but reflected color, it shows up more on light, like white will show more reflective color than black. Black, it absorbs it. So the darker that the color is, the skin tone is darker, as anyone's is, even though he's African-American, uh, doesn't really matter if he was as light as me or even lighter, he, he would still be uh, a darker tone than this. So you're gonna get more reflective color in this light area than you are in here. If you put it in here, you might put it back in this area. So. It's something to think about. Um, and that's, you know, reflective color, reflective light are two different things. And that's one thing a lot of people don't think about there. You know, reflective color, reflective light has to do with value. And reflective color is where the color is prominent enough where you can call it a color. Because a lot of times in reflective light, you almost don't see the color. in between, not quite that, but right in here. And the green, you gotta remember the other thing, is the green is gonna show off more of the warmth of its flesh tones. So it's really kind of nice to play with those, what we might call near complements here, which would be an off green and an off red. You run through your palette again? Just yeah, I left off on that. So again, yeah, we're gonna start with uh, I have titanium white, I have titanium buff, I have Naples yellow, I have yellow ochre, I have burnt sienna, I have cad orange hue, I have lizard and crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green, and burnt umber today. That's right, I'm not using asphalt, I'm using a little burnt umber. You know why? I, had a, I realized I've been using my asphalt like crazy, and I had this giant tube of burnt umber, and I went, eh, what, the difference in the two is burnt umber won't look, allow you to go quite as black when in your blacks. Other than that, either one is fine. It just has, it has a tendency to work best the way you feel the most comfortable. Let me stand back for a second. He's, he's a little too long. No, he's way too long, um, which is okay. It's just that I think I can I think I can change it as we move along. So I'm going back with a, another one of those brushes. And I'm going to take burnt umber. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of ochre. Whoa, too much ochre. I'm painting the base shadow, which is a warm shadow on his flesh tone. It's this. That feels pretty good. So we're gonna start kind of the way I see it. His head can go a little bit bigger too. It's not gonna hurt at all for that head. And I think one of the ways we can do it is to bring the collar down, his chin, his upper lip. So his head's gonna get just a little bit bigger. Same color, a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna, some and some ochre. And if it if I feel it's going too red on me, I'll pull a little green or blue into that color. So 
stand back. It's okay. Something feels doesn't feel right about the length up in here, but that's how I feel right now. I may feel different once I block everything in. This air is going to sit in here. This is the transference of line to mass. Now I see one thing that I could do to help this whole thing, but it's going to entail a little bit of work because I'm going to have to lower the hands, and I think I'm going to do that. I'll show you in a second. Just going to put the lower lip about here, bring the chin down. By painting like this, you notice how vague I'm keeping it. That's someone who's afraid to commit, by the way. Claire, it's not even a dark color. And we're going to have to do something about this, I, I, this glare situation. I, I don't like it. Um, because I don't see it, but the camera picks it up. So we're going to have to play around a little bit and see if we can come up with a solution. I'm thinking of bringing one of my um, umbrellas from outside in the house and dealing with it that way. And I, I lowered it, just lowered his lip, which is going to lower, pick a load about here, which is fine because his head just felt too small or his body felt too big. It's coming off a little better. I want to go a little bit bolder back here, up here. And remember, that's not white. And that's close to white up there. So I have a long way to go, and there's a lot of transitional tones in between. So we're going to take that. We're going to make his neck a little bit longer, right about here. I'm going to put a little blue into that color or green. Cool. Just to darken it. And kill a little bit of, because the ear is going to come up here, the neck is going to come there. Back of his head is going to be a little darker. Brushes some of that stuff out so we get, get rid of some of those darks. So let's take, while I've got that color mixed up, I'm going to back off a little bit. Okay. Uh, I see. I see something I need to do. I didn't have it. This arm is going to come down. This elbow is going to come over. Over. It's going to come down here. Going to come over. His front of his body is going to be about here. So that's going to go down and over and then up. And the top is going to be more like here. Okay, boy, I'm a lot happier, I'll tell you that. Um, let's take that nice dark. Uh, we, we know that this is basically where I want this arm. You get kind of lock it in. Because there's, you know, you were saying delineate a line. So what do you do? Draw a line here? No, because there's a gradation in there. So instead of drawing a line, what you do is just kind of indicate an edge, but knowing that you haven't um, nailed it exactly the way it is. So we're gonna that warm arm. Now this arm is actually gonna work its way. What's gonna happen is there's a lot of changes that are gonna go on in here, but I'll take care of that as we move along. So we're gonna find the underside of the wrist, which is dark because the palm is lighter. So the underside of that wrist looks to be about there, comes down here. And what I'm using for this color, by the way, is just my burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And there's some beautiful warm reflections down in here. Now the warm reflections on this arm is coming because the sun is hitting his shirt, bouncing back into the shadow side of that arm and warming it up. Let's do a little bit of drawing, a little bit of cleanup here. We're gonna take this, we're gonna bring it straight down. So we're gonna want that to be the top, which is just gonna move the fingers down. Then all these fingers are gonna come down. Just this, I don't think it's gonna change because I think I had that 
hand wrong in the first place. See, that's where it works for you. When that, I, I like it when you had it wrong and it actually is right. You thought it was wrong. Okay. Top of that hand is up in here. So we're going to kind of kill that. All right. And the bottom of that, I'm going to call it a recorder because I think I, I really believe you were correct. Um, and I think that was Bob. Bob, you a musician? Other than playing guitar, I think I've seen shots of you with your guitar. So it's fun, funny. Most artists that I know um, are, are kind of musically inclined. I, mean, I played a guitar when I was younger. Haven't played it for years. I could remember a lot of the stuff that I, chords and things of that nature that I used to play, but back of the hand. Okay, so we got, we got a, a very rough, it, it feels a lot better as far as the overall size. So let's go in on the shirt a little bit, okay? The shirt's gonna be lighter than this, but it's gonna have some shadows. And the shadows are gonna be probably very similar to the value of this. So uh, this is just ochre. And I'm gonna bring a little green into it because I see it. Ochre and green, that's gonna be a little too dark. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of white. And we're gonna start it right here. Yep, that looks like a good color. Maybe a little more green into it, huh? And this somewhat answers the question, are we gonna have any reflective green back in, and you were saying into the figure. And the answer is yes, but not in the figure's flesh tones, unless I just throw them in very sparingly at the end. So we're gonna keep this kind of this nice yellow green, ochre green, so to speak. And I'm pretty close. I told you it was gonna be very similar to value to this. Now the back, this back is probably gonna come out here. And the back of the collar, if you look here, it's similar in value, but it's warm. The warmth is from the sun bouncing off his shirt and back into the sh this part of the shadow right here. So what I did is I just took more uh, burnt umber and put it in. And the same thing up the underside of the collar, and I, all of you, I know this is showing up, right, this part of the collar right here. And it's got a lot of warmth in it, very simply because it's facing down, it's getting direct reflective color the warm color of the shirt lit by the sun is bouncing back in. So we're gonna come down right in here. And then a little bit of a dark, just so we have a, an indication of where that is, we're gonna do that line up. It's actually a shadow called a line, but up here, okay? And that's gonna be that. Now, while I've got that warm mixed into the brush, I'll, as it goes under, and I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. This is a really good example though. Um, even though the shadow, base shadow has a lot of green in it, as it gets closer and it goes under the arm, it gets warmer and darker. And that's because that much, the, uh, that much environmental light or color, which is all the green and blue sky, cannot get to it. And so in, in essence, it is not only darker, but it is warmer. And we see it right here. We see this one nice warm shadow happening there, this pull under the elbow. And I just, to warm it up, I've just basically added a little bit of, of umber. Now I could have gone with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, but I didn't. And I'm gonna go a little more umber. And as we come up under that arm here, I'm gonna start with a line and then it goes into some sort of crease right here. We wanna get that in there, okay? So that's beginning to work. Now we'll go in and we'll put in some of the rest of this stuff so we have it in. I need, a, I need a tone in there for sure. That's probably too dark. So I'm, let's start with this. And I want it, the back is right here. His back should be right here. See that? So if I go straight down, I need to bring that back and make it stand out a little bit more, which is probably gonna make this have to come out a little further. 
So it's probably going to be more this way. And then there's a couple of pulls and folds that happen right here as it goes down. Okay. Now, let's start moving around back towards some of these areas that I know I'm going to have to deal with as we move along. So we're going to come kind of define a little bit of the negative around the top of that, that recorder. There, down here. And I already lowered this, lowered that. This hand is going to lower. Let's start in a little bit more on the face. I know I can get this done quickly if I need to. Uh, that's one of the things about if you're going to paint on location and you're going to do an a la prima where you just do a one session painting, one session. You're not going to go back. You're not going to, you're going to, and probably most of you guys that do plain air, that's what it is. They're one session, one session paintings, um, which I tend to like. I, I don't mind going back and doing more, but I tend to like the directness or I, I call it the kind of blind honesty that you, uh, that you have as you approach a one session quick plain air piece. Um, blind meaning that you really aren't gonna go back and, and augment it or change it. You're just gonna live with the way it was. Um, right or wrong, it's, you know, that's the way I usually put it. Right or wrong, it's there. And, uh, or as a waiter said to me, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so let's go into the face. Let's start going into the face a little bit right now. Uh, I think I'm gonna switch over to a, um, a sable. Oh, how big, let's go uh, rosemary sable, probably, I don't know what number this is. And I use these so much, the numbers are not, but I see it get quite a bit warmer around the neck. So I've got my flesh tone, base flesh tone. I'm gonna mix more burnt sienna into it though, because I want it warmer. Now I could throw alizarin into it, but in this case, I just threw burnt sienna. And we're gonna try it right here. Are you using any medium? Right now, no. Right now, I'm not using any medium. I will as I probably move along. And I'm just looking for the reds now. The warm, but the value is very close. And I used a little bit of cat orange into that color. So I wanna enhance right about in here a little bit more. Beautiful on muzzle, little nice little piece of warmth right here. And in and around on that nose. We'll come in with some nice beautiful darks, which I've just basically reached back and we'll come in right there. Okay. And then we'll start to build a little bit back in here behind the ear where it gets very dark. I'm going to take umber and ultramarine blue because those are my two darks. And so I'm gonna start right here and come in right behind the ear and just lift up a little bit as I go down and I'll get a softer edge. So that's how you get your softer edge. You don't sit there and blend and blend and blend, by the way. The front of the ear, it's a real nice little crease and feels like it's about right here. Okay. And then the jawline, which I've indicated once, which I think I'm relatively correct with. Get front of the ear, back here, and then the jaw, and it comes down on that chin, which is quite dark. Hopefully you're not getting too many reflections because I can see it. I can see that you might be, so that's why I'm gonna go vertical on the strokes. Let me hit the stand back. Okay. I'm gonna go dark here. And as it comes down. And then it, this goes up into his beard, which transitions. So light touch. Same color, just a light touch. And almost the same value as the light. So I took some white and mixed it in with that color. Whoops, 
had a little orange on the edge. I didn't want that. So we're going to come out here. And it's got some salt and pepper kind of coming through here and here. So we got a little bit of gray, a little darker and warmer. So I'm going to take burnt sienna into that same kind of in between color. And we're going to come right in here. And I think I'm going to need to probably bring his head up a little bit back now that I see it. It's going to have to come up probably. Uh, let's see, about here, here, here. Okay, a little bit of the interior of the ear because that'll give me some things to work with. And with that nice dark, and it's a little bit warmer than just, we're gonna come in, and indicate. That's why I use a big brush. I don't want to draw an eye. That's one of my really pet peeves when, when I see someone that is a pretty good artist and they come in and they feel like they have to draw the features in. The features are part of the head and should be feel, feel like they're part of the head and not something drawn on the head. I always call that cartooning. Well, you're cartooning the head. Is a, you think about what a cartoonist does, and they you know simplify that part of it. All those values look pretty good. Okay, so while I've got that those mixed up, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to take particularly the darker, and we're going to go in. Maybe with a little bit of white because it's slightly cooler. Right there. Now I'm going to add a little medium to the paint because it, it's a little drying out a little bit too much on me. My medium is a combination of uh, safflower oil and a little bit of um, the solvent free gel, the liquid form mixed in with it. I'm gonna go with a warmer color because on this arm, this arm it's cooler right here, but in this arm it's warmer. Definitely warmer right there. That looks like it's a pretty good color, by the way. This is still like a medium sized rosemary. Um, it's a mongoose, or synthetic, synthetic mongoose, I should say. Um, that's about the right color too, except on this arm, it's not as, this arm it's warm. Now the palm is lighter still. So if I take ochre and mix it right in with that color, I can probably be pretty close because it's pretty colorful. And the palm sits down here. So I need to come in here and here. I'll throw a little bit more warm into it. By warm, in this case, what I did is I threw a little bit of the cat orange hue. Come up on that thumb a little bit, on the edge of that hand, meaning right here. And it feels okay. Why is that flower versus? Say that again? Why safflower versus linseed? I'm sorry, I still missed the. <laughs> Why safflower instead of linseed? Uh, I because I have it. Um, no, because safflower I like better. I like the viscosity. Uh, linseed starts to get a little thin and runny on me. Uh, I use it, but I never use. I never. I never use either one of them straight. I always mix with something. You know, the old masters used to mix with the mar varnish, but man, that stuff smells. Um, and it's theoretically toxic. So the solvent-free gel is supposed to be non-toxic. That's why I use solvent-free gel with it. But, it, you know, it almost will mellow out the linseed. So either one's fine. Don't feel like you have to go out and purchase. I, I switch off mediums quite often. Um, sometimes 
for no specific reason. So we're putting, got a little bit of that hand in, which I'm feeling okay with. So I'm gonna abandon it and get kind of this in, which is a lighter, cooler version. So I went back to my browns and it has a little bit of a bluish cast. So I had a little blue and brown in there and white. The white gives me my value. It's probably about right, because I do want to go lighter, but right about maybe just a tad more white. And there's a transitional kind of in between warm and cool. So I took the color I was just using, mixed it back in with this kind of orange color. And so I'm in between and I can kind of hopefully get some of that transitional color because it's not really warm, but it's not really cold. Now back on the downside of this arm, it does get a little warm because it's getting a bounce from that arm. So it's got to get a little warmer right in there. And then as it comes down on that elbow, which is right, there and this is going to get lighter probably lighter still i'm going to sneak up on the lights much the same as you've heard me mention quite often that's why i'm not laying thick paint down right now because the, the final lights will be quite a bit thicker a little bit more of a better transition in here don't like the transition i got for a, for a quick plain air it might be fine but for a, a, a more finished figure. Okay, that's, that feels good. This is all messed up. So I've got to go back to whatever darks I had um, in my brushes and kind of get that dark area back going in that part of the, right in here, in that part of the arm. And then as it goes down, really dark. So I'll go back to my blue and my umber and we'll go right here. Probably the darkest, Almost the darkest color. It's right, it's similar to right as right in here, but it's really quite dark compared to the other. It's a little bit more, uh, not as warm, not as hot. A little bit of a shadow on this arm I just caught. This is pretty good up in here. I'm gonna, you know, I, I, I do want to get enough into those fingers, so we're. In the, in the halfway stage, I don't want to go back in the head. I want to go a little further on the, sh on the um, where's my other brush? I want to go a little further on the uh, shirt. And I lost, the, there it is. Uh, a little bit further on the shirt. So we kind of have the shirt kind of done. Because um, we don't want to focus on it. I, mean, I want to put 90% of my uh, energy as we complete this thing here and here. Those are, those are my two areas of focus. So right now I'm just cleaning off one of my brushes and I'm gonna try the Naples yellow almost by itself um, into the, that's almost a little too colorful. I'm gonna mix a little titanium buff into it. That feels better. Now here's what color that is with no white. I said that on purpose with no white, because I what that allows me to do is get some of those really bright lights up top later. So we're gonna go here as it goes down onto the back. Um, is that helping? I don't know, I was trying to see if I could get rid of some of the glare. It might work when I start getting lights in, because what happens is the camera automatically changes its focus and it's aperture and kind of sometimes um, gets more of the, the light, which will darken the darks. So we're gonna, it's a little warmer up here. Threw a little bit of ochre into that color as I kind of came in on the... Yeah, I can't really. Okay. Let's try. Now we tried. Again, hopefully, when I get a few more lights in, it may make a difference. I think it's it's a matter of us figuring out how to uh, accommodate 
for the for what the camera sees in terms of lights and darks and darks always and this goes you know i do this as a, as a painter when i'm painting darks always will reflect more as far as um light because lights can only reflect light it can only get so much lighter but within this it can get a lot lighter because of the value range so it's just it's one of those dilemmas that we all have dealt with um, i'm gonna get that a little bit of that there we go stand back a little bit i kind of i like the color here better than here um that arm's got to come down a little lower i just coughed that so let's do it right now it's gonna come down to about there cut in a little bit more there we go which is gonna change all this too Okay, let's keep going on this. So uh, it's it's too, too easy for me to get distracted if you haven't already realized that. So we'll come down here. Now it goes greener at about that point. So I'm taking green, sap green, mixing it into that color. It's a little too strong of a sap green. So I'm bringing the ochre back into it. There we go. Still light. It just, I see it change change color. And I can see it in here. It's a nice transitional tone. Let's come down. Again, it's a little bit of green and ochre into that color at this point. Get rid of a, the darker um, base tone that I had down there. And a little bit darker, a little bit darker with green. Still darker. There we go. And, and then darker, darker. Again, darker is just a matter of brown and green into the same color. So when I say darker, that's what I'm doing. And if I need to warm it, I've got some warm on the side on my palette and I can pick it up. I wanna get more of the definition of the folds. You just go back and redo it. So that part is coming out pretty well. Um, I just slid back. That's why I said that. Um, so I don't want to dwell on it too much longer. We want to get a little bit of tonality going on in here. I really don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I want it to be convincing enough. I'm going to keep my eye on I'm about half done. Now, how do I feel about that? I'm a little behind where I think I should be, but not bad. A little darker, a little brown, a little green again. Just playing with subtleties in the shirt, right from the elbow. Let's pull right down here. And right here. And it kind of goes back at this point. Darker. Really, really push that dark right there. Boom really harsh. Okay. 
And as it comes up, maybe a little bit more in here, a bit more here, and then the transition. Okay, get the front of the shirt in. The further away I get, the more uh, abbreviated, for lack of a better word. You, abbreviated, it can be a synonym for um, carefree, <laughs> sloppy, indicated. I like to think indicated. Because it is kind of sloppy, but that's kind of what you want. You want it to feel like uh, I, I'm giving my own impression. I want it to feel like it's paint. It's not, it's not a shirt, it's paint. But as we move up and get closer to the focal point, we realize more of the characteristics of the shirt. So an, initially, when people look at it, obviously you want them to see a shirt. Step back for like one second. Very, very, very abbreviated. Okay. Not getting a little bit too much of a value jump from this all, all of a sudden into this. So I'm, I mix kind of the two colors together and I'm gonna come back in between and get a little bit more indication of some of the pulls and the folds that begin to see. Lynn has a question about DeMar varnish is never added to your paint, right? It's only, I don't. Um, only after. Yeah, and I don't even use DeMar varnish anymore. I use, but literally, um, yes, it you you and you can do a mixture. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, what you do is you it's your medium instead of using some of the uh, the new mediums that I've been using. Basically, what you do is you mix a third. They say stand oil and a third Terp and a third Damar. Now, you can change that by, instead of using sand oil, just use linseed oil and use a third, I mean, a third Damar and two thirds of the linseed oil. That works too. What was the first one? You said a third of Damar, Terp and what? Damar, Terp and sand oil. I don't know many people that use, I don't, sand oil is just too thick for me. Uh, I, I've I've used it in the past. I, I haven't for a long time, simply because it's just too so darn thick. Um, I know a couple artists that that's what they use. That's that's their their medium of preference. And again, you have to decide what feels right for you. I happen to be a, a I realized this as I got into painting more and more when I was illustrating couple of the jobs I had to do, um, I clothed people. I really got into folds. I don't know why. Kind of like I got into water. Um, I really got, I guess some people just have an affinity and they, they like certain things. And I found that I really loved the kind of architecture of folds. I think I could do that if I became much more of a marine painter with uh, waves too, because there is a specific structure and architecture to, to these things that you can understand and begin to actually hunt for. It's like learning how to paint a wonderful head. You learn how to paint a wonderful head by painting a head over and over and over many times. And eventually you know what to look for as you're painting a head. You know to look for a certain thing around the muzzle of the mouth. You know. And you, you, that becomes part of the architecture and or structure of a head. So we're gonna leave, leave that alone right now, the shirt. If I have to live with it, I'll live with it. So I'm gonna work in here and in here, maybe 15 minutes in each one. No, yeah, 15 minutes in each one. And at that point, hopefully I will have about 10 minutes left and we can spend a little bit of time on doing what I call uh, fixing. <laughs> You can call it refining. I call it fixing. Gotta fix it. It's not working. Okay. So 
first thing we're, I'm going to take, I don't think I'm going to use that big. I think I'll use this nice, smaller rosemary. In fact, I may use a, 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 I may use a, a number four, or is this a number six? A number four flat. I'm going to try this. Uh, I'm going to start with white. Kind of mix it into some of the browns that I already have down there. And the front of the head, it gets cool as it goes to the top. It stays a little bit warm, but not outrageously warm uh, on the front part of the head. Now, so I'm mixing a concoction of colors, warms to cools, blues to oranges, uh, to come up with the color and value that feels right. A little bit more blue. It's pretty dry. See, that's not light enough, and it's a little too green. I want it definitely different than the greens. So I'm going to throw a little bit more, maybe alizarin into it. Let's try this color. That feels a lot better. So we're going to take that color. And we're going to bring it down the front. And up. This looks to be about the right spot. So let's. Now I'm standing back because it's this value. As soon as I start getting this lighter value in, I can begin to see if it's feeling about right, which it looks to me at this particular moment to look like it's okay. Transitional tones. So it's not that same wonderful dark all the way back above the eyebrow. Okay, same color, gonna throw a little bit of warmth into it. Any one of my warm colors. In this case, I just grabbed a little bit of my uh, burnt sienna. Not a lot, just a little bit. Too much. Uh, now let's, let's keep that in there. Let's keep that because I, I just spotted a nice warm area right on this side of the eyebrow, right about there. Stood back, made it a little too big, but it's still, it's in the right vicinity, which is what we're shooting for. We're shooting for close to 100% correct on that first, first pass, right? Now, where else? I'm gonna take a nice warm color, mix orange into that base color that I was just using. And I'm gonna start, this may be a little bit challenging, but let me see what it does. A little bit of a lizard into that color. Step back. Okay. Can live with it. That's that real rosy red kind of area of the cheek. Right about here, it kind of diffuses down just a little bit more. So I'm going to. And that same color, almost almost the same color, is on the muzzle. So Laurel was asking, what color temperature is light on this head? Well, it, <laughs> there's not a light. There's this light. There's this light. This light temperature, there is no temperature. That's white right now as I look at it. It would be warm because it's sun. Uh, the lights coming from this area, which are not direct sun, tend to be cooler tend to be cooler. One of the reasons that I have found, and I painted a lot of African American, a couple of my African American friends, Bob Frazier, painted a lot of these guys. There's so much wonderful red in the flesh tone underneath all these bright lights that everybody wants to paint on, on uh, African Americans. There's all this. And so you can actually get all these wonderful warms going. And then at the end, because very often the skylight will, will bounce off you can pick you can get some of that great color if you set it up properly below that and that's one of the problems a lot of people paint is they, they look go want to go right for those highlights and they don't build what i call the substructure so that when you're painting a head any part of a figure look for the what's underneath before you get to those final light strokes. It's a wonderful little dark right down in here. And I can bring that back into light touch on the brush. I'm not pressing real hard. 
Um, I'm going to go a little bit more alizarin into that nice dark color that I was just using, and a little brown. And we're going to come in on the back side of the nose, which is right here, back side of the wing of that nostril, just right there. And then underneath, right here. And the wing is up in there. Okay. So the head is beginning to emerge, which is probably the best way of stating my goal. I, I want that head to emerge. I don't, don't want that head all of a sudden to be drawn on to a um, nice flesh tone face. I want it to emerge and build itself out of that. So we're gonna go a little darker, all right? But not, not enough. Let's try it again. Now, I don't like, that's great. I just, it's too large. That meaning the light right there. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of go knock down the back of it. Head is starting to emerge, which is good. Eye is starting to emerge. I also feel that I can go still higher on that. So I will. Not a lot. It feels better. I'm gonna take that same color I was just using. And we're getting a little bit of, ah, oh, it's kind of a warm now that I see it. So I'm gonna bring a little more orange into it. But right on the back of this head right here. So we can start. I hope you guys can begin to see this head beginning to emerge, which is kind of the way that I like to, I like to bring it up and not start with it, everything all clearly defined. Um, I do know artists that do that. I know, I've watched artists work and they just do a, a beautiful eye and then they paint the, I can't do that. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not that good at that. Um, I literally have got to bring it up slowly. Otherwise, when I end up, and it's something I found out about myself, I'll, I end up with something that is too refined and then the other areas uh, just don't gel with it. They don't feel like there's enough going on. Okay, I see a little bit of a tonality, cooler. Oh, not light enough. Let's try it again. Right about in here. And that's not an unusual area. So I'm starting to get some decent color. I hope it's showing up. This color I can see from a distance. You know, one of the things I'm going to try, um, I've got a, um, something that's going to be similar to a makeup brush. Very inexpensive brush I bought. And it's so soft, it almost doesn't disturb the paint. But you can take paint and you can, so I've got these vertical strokes and that's what's getting the reflection. If I come this way on it, hopefully, that diminishes the reflection, does it? I don't know. Yeah, it does. And so I'm really not moving, I'm just moving the direction of that stroke. So I've seen people do this on demonstrating on stage simply, and it's to get rid of some of those reflections, literally. Okay. You can also use it to fuzz if you want to fuzz an, an area. Um, but you gotta be real delicate with it. So let's go, I'm gonna use some of the underlying colors I can see right now. Um, keep moving, got about a half an hour, should be okay. Let's bring that part of the eye out a little bit more. Now, let's, this is still pretty warm, it's not light, but we're gonna come in with the warmth right in here with some beautiful blue colors right there. Ah. I want to get to it. I want to do it. I want to get to it right now. <laughs> and that's when I say, okay, hold back. Literally, I've talked to myself like that. And, you know, okay, cool it, cool it, cool it. You'll get there. You'll get there. Um, where did you find that brush, that sort of makeup brush you had? At Riley Street. A little, it's, it's not even a makeup brush. It's a watercolor brush. Mm. It's like squirrel. I think it's but it's like you can see it it's like i can barely feel it touch my so 
you probably have a glare right there. Let's see what it does. Is it working? Let's see. see, I don't want to get rid of the chunky strokes because I, I, that's part of who I am and I want it to be there. But at the same time, I do want it to be readable. Um, so let me keep let me keep moving along. Let's take let's get some darks into that recorder. I'm gonna go right here. The brown and the blue. So you can see, as I move down, this has to be here. And it's going to hit the tip of the thumb, go behind this hand, take a little bit of work to get those hands working just right. Uh, but we want this to eventually come down to about here. And let's see, one, two, three. Little finger is gonna go there. So this is gonna be the end of that. So in this case, I'm just, I'm not even using any drawing. I'm, because I've changed a lot of, that's one of the things about learning how to paint without drawing is you can make, as you, your confidence gets to the level where you can actually make a change without having to redraw everything so perfectly. And I do a, a, an exercise in one of my classes you know, quick studies class where that is the whole purpose is literally, I call it drawing without, I mean, painting without drawing. And the whole purpose is to build your ability to be able to change things as you see them that are where they're wrong. So that looks like it's about right. And it looks like the bottom could be down just a little bit lower. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time doing that. Oh, and I've got that dark though. Let's define the, that corner of that. And there's a wonderful little cast shadow from this arm onto this arm. Okay, keep going. Clean that brush. Let's start pushing a little bit more now in the head. First of all, I'm going to start. Um, in that air a little bit, get a little structure to it. So it's warm. Ears are extremities and they tend to be very warm. Some of the highlights in them might be cool, but the base tone, it's like the base tone of a nose is generally very warm. It's because the cartilage, this gets, I don't want to sound gruesome, cartilage pushes the, uh, capillaries more to the surface. And in doing so, you see more warmth, more red. It's in the knees, because it's bony, um, areas such as that, you will always, it'll always appear to be more red. Hands, hand, extremities, tips of fingers, It's one thing, as you become more adept at some of these color nuance things that, first of all, you'll start to look for them more. And second of all, it, make, it begins to make painting almost a little bit more fun because you have something to look forward to. I'm gonna go in a little bit on the bearded area, which I see some cools right in here. And a little bit of blue into that color and white. So I do want it to be, oh, that's nice. Let's see what, let's see what happens here. A little bit up in here, but not, a, no, I can go lighter because it's almost the value of the muzzle. Oh, the white is coming out too much. I didn't mix the color and in doing so, this white is good. That I, that's stronger than I want. A little bit back here. That white there is, is off. So I'm gonna 
knock that back. A little brown and blue just come in over it. There we go. Whoops. I'm not cleaning my brush. And that's why I keep, keep getting the same color over and over. There we go. Let's take that eye down just a little bit lower. Okay. Let's go a little lighter on the head. We're gonna take white and unbleached titanium. And I'm gonna start right about here. Curl straight across and then, wow. A nice sheen, but I'm not getting, I, I'm not getting a good transitional tone. In other words, at about this point, there's more warmth and it's a little bit, it's a little bit of red up in here, a little bit more. And as it moves down, nope, not there, almost a little bit, a little bit lighter. I sneak up on that because it's got to be really subtle. Okay, a little bit more red as it goes up here. Oh, I like, I like that red. Okay, let's hold on it for a second. Okay. Let's, same color with a little orange mixed into it. So unbleached titanium, the um, white and a little bit of that orange. So it's a little warmer. So I'm going to be very careful with my Okay, that's starting to work. Now we're gonna we're gonna finish it with it getting quite cold, but that sits on top. Get the warmth, the wing of the nostril. Pretty good. Little bit, little bit on his lower lip. Right. There. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. So we're going to end up with some cools. I still have, I need to bring that eye down just a little bit right here at this point. Okay, that works a little better. Keep an eye on the time. We've got about 20 minutes, a little over. Um, so I'm a little behind. I'm really getting a little concerned here. So where I go, it's, I'm probably fussing too much. White into that same color that I was just using and blue. So we're gonna go from the nose down on edge light on that, the rim of his mustache, a little bit there. Now on the underside, it's a little bit of that too, but it's a little more neutral. And I'm getting a little bit of I'm gonna throw a little more brown into that color. There we go. We're gonna get a little bit coming down here, working its way down on the chin, coming across on the underside of the chin, and darker still, get a little bit of a rim light there. Okay, so the head is starting to worry. I also see it a little bit. Actually, it's not on the head, it's behind the head. Um, right, so I took the green and added a little bit of, of um, right there. Okay, this head's beginning to work. I haven't put the pretty color in yet. So let's hold off, let's get the arms and hands and we'll come in and we'll, do, we'll finish it. Brown, blue, and white. I actually mixing it right into the unbleached titanium. Um, and I want to paint that's the top light on the arm, which is cool. 
So I think I'm, I think I'm okay here. Nope, not light enough. Try it again. Oh, it's got a little purple into it. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of, just a touch of alizarin back into that same color. That feels better. Step back, yep. Right, the wrist, and then the way this kind of blends down into the other color and you just overstroke it a few times. Hopefully you'll come out pretty close to where you wanna be. It feels okay. Up on the back of this hand, not quite as bright. A Little bit up in here, a little bit right at transitional tone right in here. Back side a little bit. I'm going to warm it up the little. Uh, let's warm it even more. Get a little bit, almost a wonderful bright little edge light right here. Yeah, lighter still. Cad, I just mixed a little bit of a. Um, what do you call it into it? Naples. Back of the hand looks okay. Something that looks a little flat and boring. And I don't want to dwell on it because I have more to do on the face, but I think it's right in here. I think I need a little bit more light. Probably could have had a little bit more of a of a reddish or a lizarin kind of a cast right there. A little bit right here. All right, then we're gonna bring that back on that finger. Think about this. One of the things you got to, you've got to deal with in something like this is you're painting a series of about six fingers, seven fingers. So um, I'm going to go back to this. Hopefully, yeah, that's just about right. I'm going to go there and we're going to get those. And I'm using, um, I'm using uh, burnt sienna and white for this stuff right in here. The tips of the finger is quite warm. Shorter finger. Another one back. Okay. I think we're getting to the point where the hands are going to make more sense once I do the final lights on them. I've got to do a little bit of work on the recorder, but if I have to, that'll come in the last two minutes. Okay. I want to go back to the head and start to put the lights in. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep the same brush. Normally I'd switch down. I'm going to take white and ultramarine blue and maybe a touch of alizarin because I don't want it to be a shocking blue. Yeah, just a touch. So it's a kind of a lavender color. Right about there, and I can go a little lighter as I move to the top of the head, right about. Oh, I like that. That worked. So back to the little bit bluer color. Now this may be too light. I'm not, I'm just not convinced that I have exactly the right value. So I darkened it just a touch. And we're going to go right here. And pull it back on the cheekbone. And on the front of that eyelid. It's working. I just stood back. Whew. The front of the cheek. A little bit, I haven't hit the nose yet, a little bit on the muzzle, but it's not as, it's, it's not as, um, let's try this. Oh, I like that, that worked. Oh, what I did is I just added a little brown to the color I was using. And we'll kind of carve underneath. See if there's any more soft transitions, maybe a little bit in the beard here, a little bit here and there.
And uh, something on the upper left that I noticed earlier, brown and blue, and maybe a little lizard, keep it warm. But I want to get that nice dark edge right here. OK, keep going with this uh, blue light. So we're going to go on the edge of the nose. I'm going to go a little bit whiter, just a little bit. And I'm going to be careful with my finger. But it's going to go right here, a little lighter. And when I do a little lighter, what I do is I pick up just a little bit of white and brought, bring it right back into that color. Just I want it to pop more. There we go. And then right. Well, I added a touch more white. The head is starting to work. It took a while. Now, we're going to go. I want to give myself enough time to go back into his hand and the recorder. So I'm going to, I'm going a little faster in popping lights than I would normally. I would normally bring them up slower. Just so you guys know. I, in other words, I'd go through more stages before I get to that final light. When I say bring it up slower, that's really what I'm referring to. It's just more stages that I would probably go through. <clears throat> now, I don't know how, let's do a little bit of glare. I can see a little bit of work I could do in that eye too. Um, I, I will try in a little bit, but I want to get enough of the rest of it going. I uh, don't know what the heck I was thinking there. There we go. Um, the recorder, the, the top part, yellow part. Ochre and titanium buff. Notice I saw, I'm using titanium buff more lately. I just discovered I had a an older two. And so I laid it out and I thought, geez, I kind of like this because it lets me go light without going all the way to white. And that, what that does is that gives you that little safety valve. So if you do want to go lighter, you can go lighter. See, I went too far. I, I chopped down too much of his lower lip. So with a clean brush, small clean brush, blue, Alizarin and um, let's just come right in here. There we go. Now, let's keep going on it. The front part. Uh, this part is really kind of nice because it's, it's a side. And then the opening's darker. So we just go back. I've got a dark color kind of on my palette, mixed up with a little bit of green, similar value. OK, leave that alone for right now. A um, little bit on the top of the recorder. So first thing I got to do is get a little dark, more dark going on around here, clean it up. OK. Now it has a little top light, which is a little cooler version of that, uh, of this. So we're going to go right here with one, two, three. And a little bit of an edge light on the bottom. You see that right there? A little bit right here. And I see that same light right there, and then brighter up top, right? There. Now let's get his fingers in there, if we can. A little, the bright light. 
and it's it's like slightly bluer light, but I mixed another little color into it, so it's not quite blue. But we're gonna accentuate that finger. A little bit more white. So when you say more stages, what do you mean? More nuance in color, temperature? Yeah, duration? in other words, okay, more stages, more structure is what really what I mean. But the best way for me to define that when I when I say more structure is what I'm trying to do is build, before I put my final strokes on, build more under structure, I guess would be probably the best way of stating that. And it's, tr it's true, it's one of the things that I do see people do, um, they wanna go for those finish, just hold off, hold off, well, the only reason I'm going as fast as I am on the on the coming up to the bright lights is for the sake of doing it this in basically an hour and, and 30 minutes. So that's the only, otherwise I would take it up much slower. And eventually uh, I'm gonna finish off the hands and it'll give me a couple minutes to do a little touch ups on the space. But so this little finger has got a little bit of a, uh, an edge light. This definitely has that. Even in here, I'd probably go through more stages because the back of the hand, back of that finger is not quite as light. And let's see, there's that finger, then there's this finger, and a little bit over here. Here. Up. A little bit, I don't wanna go quite as white but I want the knuckle structure to be in here. So I really do mean structure when I use that term. Um, but what I'm trying to talk about in order to build the structure, you, you build up to those final stages. You don't start with the extremes and try and fill in everything in between. Um, it's like, if you're gonna start and get your base down and then build your darks in a little bit more, build your lights in a little bit more, your darks, your lights, your darks, your lights. And eventually you're gonna finish, eventually. But initially, no. Initially it's gonna be underdone. It's gonna look unfinished. Keep it looking unfinished. You know, I, I, that's really the best way to state that probably. Never thought of that before, but I used to say, I used to teach a lot acrylics. I was teaching at Art Center. And one of the lines that I, I remember liking to use is, is keep it looking, keep it slightly transparent in acrylics and keep it, it just, it feels like there's some, it's just not pushed far enough. It's just not light enough. And just keep working on everything in between while it's at that stage, everything you can do. And then finally, finally, if you feel you're ready, go ahead and finish it but don't try to finish too soon. Again, the reason I'm doing that is, is because we're trying to finish this thing in an hour and a half. That's, that's the total reason. There's, I would build, I can see right in here, I could build a lot more structure in there, right in, in this hand, back and up on that knuckle, and that knuckle, in the back of the hand, this, too, too much red, but if I blend it in a little bit more. Sometimes if I get the wrong color down and you know that all you have to do is fuss with it a little bit, rather than remix a new color, I'll just literally stay with that color and work, work it into my other colors to the point where I can get it to work. Okay, so it's close to done. Right, hands aren't quite where I'd want them. But I, I kind of thought that might happen just due to, due to the time. Now, if I want to, I can go a little lighter behind that hand and pull the hand out a little bit more if I want to. Even though in the, uh, in the reference, and that's how you build all those things. That little finger needs definition, but it doesn't, isn't the finger, it's just the outlining. The, area around it needs to be defined more. It's too, I bet it was too vague with it. Now, let's see if there's anything else. As we're, last thing I'm gonna do, 
Okay. Yes. You see, we got this beautiful blue light up there. So I'm going to remix that color with white, blue, maybe a touch of alizarin. So it doesn't end up, what the alizarin does, by the way, it just takes it into a little bit more of a, of a violet range. So we've got this, and I'm going to add some medium to that. But uh, here's why with that color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, what I've done here, I'm going to do here, not light enough. More white. That's an easy fix. Still, I could add more white. And again, more white. We're going to go whiter as it faces the same way that this faces here. This is where you can be bolder. This is the fun stuff. This isn't as, as tedious as doing the face. The face, it's, there's so much subtlety in there. Not that there isn't in a, in a piece of cloth like this. There's a tremendous amount of subtlety. However, since we're focusing on the face, you can be more abrupt. See, now that is unifying the bright lights by keeping that and that cool. And if I want to, and I do, so I shouldn't say if I do, I'm gonna take pure white and a little medium, pure white. But I, remember, I already have residue in my brush and I'm gonna get really bright right here. And we got his head shiny and I can take that same kind of color and I noticed earlier, as it comes out, because it, it's getting a lot of skylight too. Um, so it's cool, white, white will cool a warm color too. So we're gonna put it right here. Anything else? A little bit lighter here. Oh, that's, that's a warm light. I didn't want a warm light, but whatever. I ended up with one. I wanted a cool light, so I mixed some more blue into that same color. Let's try it again. See, the consistency is that top cool light. And that's, that's, um, one of the things that you can do to tie your painting together. Um, if I want to, I can come in and define some of the backside of that arm with, and I mentioned this, that's why you want, wanted to stay in that mid-tone in that green, because then I knew I can come in behind to help things to read a little bit more. And have fun with that. I mean, just like that's, I started getting too, too light there. So I just brought more brown and green back into it and kind of kept the paint a little chunky. Up in here, we talked about this area up in here, how it might be a problem. Not, not big problem, not as much as I thought, truthfully. When I was first starting, I thought, well, I could see that being. So we're getting things to read. Not real crazy about this contour down here, but what I think I would do, and we'll we're gonna call it quits in about one minute, um, is take this background color and come in, and it's got a little bit. If you see this cool light, is actually illuminating the lower part of that fold and the way it illuminates the back here, a little bit of a pull. This is the fun stuff too, right in here. I mean, this is, I think what got me into folds a long time ago. I just, 
I enjoyed finding, like I said, the almost the architecture or the structure of a fold, as opposed to just kind of, and after a while, you can actually do that to the point where you're just indicating it, just roughing it out. A little bit of a rim light on the back, a little bit right in here, it looks like. It's probably too small of a brush to do some of this stuff with, but I'm doing it. Keep looser, the further away I get, the looser I am. Well, I think that's uh, coming off okay. You know, I think I could make it better, but, um, and maybe I'll put a few things into it when I'm all done. Um, but for all intents and purposes, uh, it's done. I'm gonna take a little white and a little blue that I already have mixed and a little medium. And I'm gonna do a little touch up on the tip of the nose, clean my finger, really light right here. And light right there, there. There we go. Hopefully that works. He, he looks pretty good from here. Um, hands could definitely use some work. I might do a little bit of work on that. But all in all, there's your guy. There's your, what do we call this guy? A, a what do you call it, player? <laughs> a recorder. Or a recorder. <laughs> or piccolo, we don't know which one. Yeah, whatever it is. In any event, thanks for uh, tuning in. I'll try to go closer. I think they would like to see. But... This is cool. I sound like a television person. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. I don't know if that helps at all. But. Yeah. Again, yeah. Does that, yeah, that does actually. Yeah. Um, we'll you, shoot a photo of it. Yeah, do that again. This might even help more. No? Can't tell. Yeah, can't tell. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, everyone. I didn't put the stripes in. I didn't feel they're necessary. I didn't have time. It's probably more I didn't have time that I didn't feel they're necessary. So. That, and I just say that in case some of you are going, well, he didn't put the stripes in. Okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>